joyfully we are gathered today. And again, we come to this time of Advent, this final Sunday of Advent, to experience joy. So all of these gifts are intertwined with each other. They meld one into another. We began with faith, that foundation that um, tells us, yes, all is well. And we stand in that faith, knowing that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. We just had a beautiful child come into the sanctuary. Yes, yes. <laughs> Full of smiles, yeah. And from that faith, we moved in peace. And that's the peace that we can't find here in the world. When we look around at what's happening in the world, we don't find this peace because this is the peace from the divine, the peace that surpasses all of our human understanding, all of our ability to comprehend in our human sense world. But so we have to lift our thinking to that divine thinking and have our hearts and minds be guarded by that peace that we find in what is called the Christ Jesus. And then we move and are invited into the spaciousness of love, that Advent gift of love. And it reminds us that no matter where we are, what we're doing, we are bound together as one. Those moments that you have that, oh, I need to call so-and-so who might be across the country. That's our connection one to another. That's the love that binds us. And scripture says in Colossians 3.14, above all, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. So if you see a place in the world that doesn't look like perfect harmony, pour your love into that. Clothe yourself in love. All of the garments that we put on, let them be love. Everything we do, everything that we think and say, let it be from love. Ah, imagine the world when we can look around and know that truth for ourselves. And then all of that, all of that comes together to bring us to joy. So joy is really a journey in life. So let's take that journey together today. So that very first Christmas, Mary and Joseph, Mary, very with child, made their way to Bethlehem because it was the first year that people had to be counted. And they, Joseph being in the house of David, had to go to Bethlehem to record himself there. And of course, that's where Mary gave birth. It was a journey. And there's a story about Mary, you know, the baby Jesus was born and with all the excitement about everybody being in Bethlehem to, to be recorded also, you know, celebrating the religious holidays of the time. And, and she finally got the baby Jesus to sleep. So he's sleeping soundly in her arms and a little boy comes by thinking, hmm, what this woman really needs now is a drum solo. Pa rum pum pum pum. <laughs> yes. Ah, the gift of the joy of laughter. Could you help me with the slides, please? Oops, we'll come back to that one. The joy of laughter. It's part of who we are. And this is one of my favorite photos that Jesus laughing. You know, we sometimes think of Jesus as that serious dude who was doing all the miracles and healing everybody and teaching. And But Jesus, somewhere along the line, had to laugh. Because you can't journey around the world and not laugh a time or two. Just what happens on the journey. So all the way back to Genesis, we have stories of laughter as part of life. Sarah was brought to laughter when she realized that in her advanced years, she was with child and that she would bear a son, Isaac. Abraham laughed with her. And she says, and it goes back to Genesis, God has brought me to laughter, she said. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. That's the joy that we feel that just flows out of us as laughter. 
keeps us laughing. We gather as community in our activities and we laugh together. Laughter releases stress. This, can, go back please. Laughter. This was a yard sale right here at the corner of Unity Greenville. We had annual yard sales. There was a lot of funny things that happened, and obviously with this picture, yes, there was laughter. And we laugh together as we create experiences together that are joyful. Not laughing at someone's misfortune, never laughing at the expense of others, but laughing together as we move through the tasks of life, as we share of our time, our talent, and our treasures. And in the past, in the present, and all the moments of, to come, we stay strong in our faith, knowing that good things are about to be revealed. We keep peace in our heart, so we navigate this journey's bumps, potholes, all the journey that we can navigate with a sense of peace. Navigate that together so that when one person is feeling a little overexcited, the others can bring them back to center. And one feel, person begins to spin, others can bring them back to center. We navigate that journey together. And always come with a consciousness of love. Always come with love so that we can all move in harmony, remembering that harmonious gift of love. And allow ourselves to be joyful at the possibilities that lay ahead. Joyful for that field of infinite potential, even though it's unknown, let it be joyful. The journey of joyfulness is when we pray together. And these are some of our spiritual care team who bring the joy of prayer to life. We experience that joyfulness when we connect with spirit, when we pray for one another in all those life circumstances, when we pray with one another for job interviews, medical appointments, academic testing, whatever life is bringing, we pray with one another. We pray for our world. We spent 100 days praying after our election, praying for our elected officials, our president, our vice president. We prayed over the waters of the Gulf during an oil spill. We prayed for our city in that dreadful July day in 2016 when tragedy struck the city of Dallas. We pray for our children so fervently at each and every incident of a school shooting and we pay, pray for them every day. Prayer is foundational to our spiritual practice. So prayer box. <coughs> Reverent we pray and joyously we pray. The journey of joy is being present and to that love as couples come together in marriage. We pray and we celebrate their love as they come together for their journey going forward as married couples. So this is Don and Al, and, and we, we joined in this sanctuary with their dearest and most treasured family and friends. And joy and love that was so palpable in this room, the entire space was enlivened by love. The beauty of love and the grace of love. And we come together in that joyous journey of recommitting one to another as couples. Every year we did that. The journey of joy is one of being family. The sounds of the children in the classrooms across the courtyard, hearing them out in the courtyard climbing the trees, 
on our fifth Sunday, welcoming the children into this sanctuary and feeling the energy change as they come in, as they sit, as they whisper and make their noises, as children do. And the energy that they bring, unless you become as children, you cannot enter that kingdom of heaven. You cannot enter that kingdom of God. So we take our cue from our children, of the joyousness of being childlike in innocence, filling our Long-time families raising their children generation after generation are in unity, or newer families who are just finding about these unity truths and how to bring them into their family life. It includes joy. It's a joyous journey. Our journey of joy is one of accomplishing. Ah, oh, remember our Renew, Refresh, Restore, and we had many accomplishments for our spiritual community, renovating this building from top to bottom, side to side, inside and out. The joy that flowed in those days that we supported and honored the, oh, this amazing building. She's a mature building, nearly 100 years old, so she needs our TLC. We accomplished things that were sometimes messy, sometimes very messy. On Sunday morning when pipes would break. <laughs> we accomplished all of that. And we did laugh through that as well. And we were reverent in honoring the history of Reverend Ruth Gillespie and Reverend Cora Crandall, who actually gifted us this building. We lovingly share a ministry to this physical building. And this church is not the building. It is the spirit of all who come here every Sunday during the week, those who even join virtually. You, it's, it, this, this is what the church is. Yes, we love this building. We joyously join together on Sunday to celebrate here. But the journey of joy is even more. The journey of joy is being community. We are completing the uh, Christmas angels process as the families come to pick up their their presence for their children with Miss Linda's Pay It Forward Dallas. And as you so generously and joyously I know it was joy for you because I saw the twinkles in your eyes as you brought your gifts for the children. I see the joy of the families as they so humbly receive what you gift them. There is joy in that part of our journey. There is joy in the journey of community as we put food in our little free food cupboard for people to sustain themselves as we engage in the community and the, the culture of the community. And yes, down in the corner, that's cake because you can't have joy without cake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the joy of welcoming those who worship differently than us as we sat upstairs and partake in the Passover Seder experience and welcome the Muslim community into that and we hear the sound of joyous conversation. Joy is a journey of life. Joy is a journey of celebration. This was a picture from our very last uh, banquet in 2019. There is joy and the celebration of coming together and eating food and listening to music and dancing together. There is joy in being community and celebrating that community. Galatians 5.22 tells us that joy is one of the fruits of spirit. Now as we approach Christmas Day and the birth of that divine consciousness, as each and every one of us, Let's embrace that joy. Let's embrace the joy that comes from living as a 
perfect, beautiful expression of God. Let us live what we truly are at this very moment as Christmas Day and every day forward we express that divine consciousness freely, generously, willingly. And let us embrace that gift of faith, the gift of peace, and the gift of love. Let us allow those gifts of Advent to be made manifest in the world through us as we show up as each of those qualities. Let us move joyously with anticipation in that field of the infinite possibility that is bright, that carries us always to the highest good that we can attain. For us as individuals, for this spiritual community, for the city of Dallas, for our country, and for our world, let us be these gifts of Advent with every thought we hold, every word we speak, every action we take, so that we can know with confidence that our space of influence, however broad and wide that is, is holy and sacred so that we can assure ourselves that we are living our highest purpose. So let's not wait for an invitation. Let's not hesitate. Let's not pause. Let's not linger. Let's be all that we can be in our world right now. Let's be all those gifts of Advent here and now because there is no better moment than this very moment. And this moment, and this moment, and every moment going forward. There's no one who is better prepared than you to be the faith, the peace, the love, and the joy for our world. Nehemiah 8 tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you've all been around here long enough to know that that Lord is our highest consciousness. It's the truth of who we are. It's our divine identity. That is our strength. All of those things that we cannot find in the world, even though we are gifted and grateful to have this experience of living in this world. We are to be in the world, but not of the world, because the world will not feed us those gifts. We feed the world those gifts. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. So as we know that to be our truth, we hold others in that same truth, and we call one another into that truth to be the highest and best of themselves. We call each other into being the love that we know we're here to be. And if we think we're here for any other purpose, think again. So we are here to be the power and presence of love. We are here to be faithful in that love and to demonstrate that love to all beings and to remember that your joy is my joy. Your suffering is my suffering. So we remember that when we're here in this spiritual community where it's pretty and loving, and we remember that as we drive down Greenville Avenue and the gentleman at the corner of the street who's asking for our coins your joy is my joy. Your suffering is my suffering. That is the love that binds us together as one. Let's be that now. So you know how it goes. Your left hand over your right shoulder, your right hand over your left shoulder, and know that you are peacefully, faithfully, lovingly, joyously hugged by me. And so it is. Merry Christmas. <laughs>